Here is the history of programming languages. You can find the resources I used down in the description below. Our story begins 1883. I know, seems really early for a programming language. The algorithm for the analytical engine was developed, created by a lovely lassie Ada Lovelace, also known as the Princess of Parallelograms. She studied mathematics, which was atypical for women of the period. Her algorithm was used to compute Bernoulli numbers for Charles Babbage, an English mathematician who originated the concept of a digital computer and his analytical machine. This algorithm is widely considered to be the first computer programming language. Now let's fast forward 66 years to 1949. The low level language known as assembly was created. Now assembly has a strong relationship between the instructions within the language and machine code instructions. It was first widely implemented in the electronic delay storage automatic calculator, also known as EDSAC, which was constructed by Maurice Wilkes at the University of Cambridge. Fancy. The calculator was used to solve differential equations and discovered a 79 digit prime number, the largest known at the time. That's a lot of digits. 1952 comes around and we see autocode. Now autocode wasn't actually a singular programming language, but a term used to describe a family of early computer programming languages. The first of which was developed at the University of Manchester by Alec Glennie for the Manchester Mark I. It is also believed to be the first programming language to run through a compiler. Five years later in 1957, the programming language 4chan I mean Fortran, emerged. Developed by IBM and used mainly for complicated mathematical calculations, Fortran actually stands for formula translation. Fun fact, Fortran is used in programs that benchmark the world's fastest supercomputers. Fortran is still used widely today. Just one year later, in 1958, Algol was created. Algol, let's see if you can guess, meaning Algorithmic language was a basis for languages like Pascal, C, C++, and Java. Most modern languages have syntax inspired from Algol and is considered to be amongst the most influential early programming languages. Introducing code blocks with beginning and end delimiters, Algol was also the first language to implement nested function definitions with lexical scoping. Another one year later, we see COBOL, originally developed by Dr. Grace Murray Hopper and was designed to run on all brands of computers. COBOL meaning common business oriented language it is very common to find in ATMs, telephone systems, and general business, finance, and administrative systems. Fun fact, blocks of COBOL were used in the Terminator's vision display. COBOL is still used throughout mainframe computers on legacy applications, yet much of this current COBOL development primarily maintenance for these older applications. 1959, we see Lisp. Developed at MIT, Lisp, meaning list processing language, is considered to be the second oldest high-level programming language after 4chan. I mean, Fortran. Now, as the name implies, linked lists are key data structure within Lisp, and Lisp source code is made up of lists. It also became a popular language for the study of artificial intelligence during the period. Now, it's the Vietnam War, 1964. The programming language BASIC was produced by John Kameny and Thomas Kurtz at Dartmouth College. As the name implies, BASIC was designed around students who didn't have a strong background in mathematics, so that students would still be able to effectively use computers. Now, BASIC stands for Beginner's All-Purpose Symbolic Instruction Code. Later in 1975, our boy Bill Gates and Paul Allen would alter BASIC, which would become one of Microsoft's first products. 1970, named after the famous French mathematician and philosopher Blaise Pascal, the programming language Pascal was developed by Nicholas Wirth. Compared to prior languages, Pascal was relatively easy to learn and was favored when teaching computer programming during the time. It was an efficient language designed to encourage good programming style and structure. And for all the students out there, that means comment your code. Fun fact, Pascal was used throughout Apple's early software development. 1972 rolls around and we see Smalltalk. Now this isn't just any small talk, first created by Alan Kay, Adele Goldberg, and Dan Ingalls at Xerox. Its main innovation was allowing programmers to change code on the fly, and its primary use was for educational purposes. It would come to inspire several features found in more modern programming languages, like my personal favorite Python. Funny enough, in 2017, Smalltalk was the second most loved programming language 
on a Stack Overflow developer survey. Now for everyone's favorite. Also in 1972, at Bell Labs, a little language simply known as B, <coughs> C, was developed by Dennis Ritchie. Despite prior languages being considered high-level programming languages, C is believed to be the truly first high-level programming language. And by high-level, we mean it is closer to human language than machine code. First developed so that Unix could run on different types of computers, C has had some influence on many future languages. During the 1980s, C began to gain traction and is still amongst the most popular programming languages used, and is commonly taught throughout computer science, higher level education, <clears throat> speaking from personal experience. Now you thought 1972 was over, but not, not quite yet, my friends. Also during this year, we see the emergence of the ever so faithful SQL, also known as SQL. Originally developed by Donald Chamberlain and Raymond Boyce at IBM, SQL, an acronym for Structured Query Language, SQL is a programming language designed around querying a database and is still widely used in database management today. Now, if you've had to take a linear algebra course recently, Recently, you'll be familiar with MATLAB. Created in 1978 by Cleve Moeller, MATLAB stands for Matrix Laboratory. Creative. It is argued to be amongst the best programming languages for advanced mathematical computations and is indispensable in mathematical research. As a student, I can assure you that MATLAB has saved me an immeasurable amount of time manipulating matrices for my math classes. Now let's take a stroll over to 1983, where we first see Objective-C used. Created by Brad Cox and Tom Love, Objective-C combines Smalltalk style messaging with the C programming language. And until the recent development of Swift in 2014, Objective-C was the main programming language for Apple's Mac OS and iOS. In 1983, we see another improvement on the C programming language with C++. Developed by Bjorn Straussup at Bell Labs, C++ is also known as C with classes and was designed with system programming in mind. Featuring more high-level features, it is currently one of the most widely used programming languages and is used in popular high-performance software like like Minecraft, I, I mean Adobe Photoshop. New versions of C++ are still being released roughly every three years, with C++ 20 being the newest upcoming release. Mark your calendars. 1987. The programming language Perl makes an appearance, developed by Larry Wall as a scripting language for text editing. Oddly enough, Perl has no official acronym. Perl borrows features from C Basic and Lisp and is commonly used in Linux system administration, web development, and network programming. It's been a long road, my friends, but now we have reached the 1990s. In 1990, named after an American mathematician, Haskell Brooks Curry, the programming language Haskell was created. It is mostly a mathematical programming language and is used mainly for intense number crunching. Yummy. Haskell innovated with type classes and utilized type inference and lazy evaluation. One year later, the famous, famous programming language, Python, makes an appearance. Designed by Guido Van Russum, Python is much easier to read and requires overall less lines of code compared to previous programming languages. Now, I bet you didn't know, or maybe, maybe you did. Python is named after the comedy group Monty Python and is notorious for making programmers feel lazy because it offers so much utility and almost uncontested code readability. It is also a favorite language for data science purposes in one of my personal favorite programming languages. Also in 1991, we see the emergence of Visual Basic developed by Microsoft. Visual Basic's key feature allows users to drag and drop chunks of code in a graphical user interface. It was designed to be extremely easy to learn, and in 2016, Visual Basic 6.0 won the Technical Impact Award at the 19th Annual DICE Awards. Now we've come to 1993, and the programming language R is created at the University of Auckland in lovely New Zealand. That wasn't a New Zealand accent. Ross Ahaka and Robert Gentleman developed R, and R is mostly used among stat stat statisticians, 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 and data scientists for data analysis and the development of statistical software. And as of January 2020, R ranks 18th in terms of the most popular programming languages. As we will see, 1995 was definitely the year 
of the programming language. And now, as all freshman computer science majors are familiar with, the steamy, tasty Java programming language was created in 1995 by Sun Microsystems. Press F for respect for Sun Microsystems. Originally called Oak, not entirely sure why, Java is commonly taught for object-oriented design, as well as having few implementation dependencies. Java was originally intended for cable boxes, but was later improved upon for use on the World Wide Web. Java was designed around the phrase, write once, run anywhere, where Java applications can run on any JVM, where JVM means Java Virtual Machine, completely independent on the underlying computer architecture. Fun fact, more than 3 billion devices currently run Java. Also, in 1995, PHP, originally standing for Personal Homepage, and the target language for many memes on the programmer humor subreddit, PHP was developed by Rasmus Lerdorf and was mostly used in web development. For example, the popular blog creation site WordPress is written in PHP. Next on the 1995 train is Ruby. Created by Yukihiro Matsumoto, Ruby is like Matsumoto's perfect child because he combines all his favorite aspects from various other programming languages like Perl, Smalltalk, Basic, and Lisp. Like PHP, Ruby is most commonly found in web development software stacks, yet Ruby runs slower compared to other web development languages. Ruby also features dynamic typing and garbage collection. Lastly, in our 1995 programming language montage, JavaScript comes to the table. Developed in a mere 10 days by Brendan Eich, JavaScript focuses on enhancing web browser interactions. JavaScript is often just-in-time compiled and is considered a core technology along HTML and CSS for the three big W's. Now, we go on a bit of a relaxation period for five years until we hit 2000 with the development of C hashtag, I mean C Sharp. Created by Microsoft as a part of the .NET initiative, C Sharp was designed to combine the computational ability of C++ with the simplicity of Microsoft's previous Visual Basic. C Sharp is comparable to Java and widely used through many Microsoft products and applications. C Sharp consists of strong typing, lexical scope, is object oriented, among other features. Now 2003 rolls around and we have Scala, created by Martin Odersky to combine mathematical, i.e. functional programming, with object oriented programming. Scala was focused around being concise and to improve upon many criticisms of the object oriented language Java. Also in 2003, a language I have never heard of until now, Groovy was created as an improvement on Java. Created by James Strachan, Groovy is favored by some developers because of its relative simplicity when it comes to learning as well as its succinctness. Now, down to our two last languages. In 2009, we see the emergence of Go also known as Golang. Developed by the tech giant Google, Go was designed to help fix problems that are common in Google's immense software systems, where languages like Java and C++ would fall short. In terms of syntax, Go is similar to C, but with the addition of memory safety, garbage collection, as well as some other useful features. Golang was amongst the highest paid recent technical skills, and if you want to check out some of the other highest paying technical skills, check out my other video where I talk about the highest paid technical skills. And if you made it this far, thanks for sticking with me. Lastly, in 2014, the mega corporation Apple developed the programming language Swift as a replacement for pretty much every other language used previously throughout Apple in typical Apple fashion, such as C, C++, and Objective-C. Swift is known for its ease of use and small room for error. Swift is widely applicable to both desktop and mobile applications. If you have a Mac or maybe a Mac OS VM, you can easily download Xcode from the Apple App Store to start learning and programming in Swift to create iOS applications. And that, my friends, has been the brief history of programming languages up until 2020. So as of editing this, I just have a few brief corrections, courtesy of the programming subreddit. So I referred to Haskell as a mathematical language. By that, I meant a functional language, so meaning there are no pointers or for loops or things like that. Additionally, the graph I showed of Ruby's performance was actually outdated and Ruby in today's day 
is about as fast as PHP and Python. Lastly, I also mentioned that C was considered to be the first high level programming language. Some people said that the 1977 revision of Fortran, as well as Lisp, Pascal and uh, Algol could be argued to be amongst the first as well. I hope you guys liked that video. Consider tuning in to a future video of mine, giving you bad British accents when you need it, and some burps when you need it, some useful advice when you need it. Again, my name is Mikey. Consider hitting that subscribe button, that like button down below, commenting down below what you thought of the video. It'd mean an absolute ton. It's been a pleasure, and I'll see you all in another video. Bye-bye.